I'm Mark Kaplan, and this is Saint Stories. Now, Saint Stories, as you know, talks about people that are helping others in the community. Well, this is just unbelievable, unbelievable what I'm talking about today. We have three very special guests. Dr. Greg Dewey. Can I call you Greg, by the way? Absolutely. Okay. Dr. Greg Dewey, who's president of the Albany College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. Willie White, who is the executive director of A Village, Inc. And Jenna McGreevy, who's class of 17 at the Albany College of Pharmacy. And uh, she is the, what are you president of? Um, I'm the president of our chapter of the American Pharmacist Association. That's very cool. So wait to hear what these people are doing. This is really incredible, and hopefully you'll get behind it because this is something that can answer a lot of questions that people have. Um, Dr. Dewey, why don't we start out with you? What is Beyond Practice? Ready? Well, first of all, uh, Mark, uh, thank you for having us on uh, the show tonight. It's a real pleasure to be here and to be able to uh, uh, tell you all about our initiatives. Uh, the um, Beyond Practice Ready is a fundraising initiative that we uh, are launching at the Albany College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. As, as educators, when we have students in the classroom, we are always concerned that when they walk out of their classroom into their professions, are they really ready to practice that profession? And, and this is especially important for pharmacists and health scientists that when they leave uh, our college, leave the classroom, get into the, in, into the uh, profession, we want them to be practice ready. But these, you have to understand, Mark, that these professions are changing so rapidly that we don't need to educate our students for the profession as it is today but the profession as it is tomorrow. So mm-hmm. we want to go beyond practice ready. So to do this, we created a, uh, an initiative, and, and I just want to talk about the, um, really the centerpiece of that initiative, and that is to create two student-operated pharmacies. And these student-operated pharmacies uh, will be in uh, medically underserved uh, parts of our region. One will be at uh, the Hometown Health Clinic in Schenectady on State Street, and the other one will be um, on Morden Avenue in the South End on uh, Lincoln uh, Plaza. In Albany. In Albany. Yes. In Albany. And, and, uh, and, and so these pharmacies will be more than just dispensing pharmacies. There will be um, uh a, an outlet for us to provide other services, uh, counseling services to the community, things like diabetes screening and counseling, uh, smoking cessation, uh, informing people about Medi- uh, Medicare, how to sign up for insurance. So we want to we wanna have a host of services and really uh, be part of that community and help the health care of the community. You know, we, we got this great location at the uh, base of Morden, uh, three, 3 Lincoln Square, and little did I know our next-door neighbor in that location is uh, a village uh, and with Willie White, and uh, that uh, that is a great start because we don't want to just be an isolated service unit in the community. We want to be partners. Where did the idea come from? Well, actually, the idea came from um, I was up talking to um, a group called the Rochester Drug uh, Cooperative. Uh, Rochester Drug Cooperative is a wholesaler that is very interested in stimulating independent pharmacists, the mm. growth of independent pharmacy. Uh, you know, historically, New York State had a lot of independent pharmacists, and then in the mid '80s, uh, many of them got swept away. Uh, by the retail uh, community pharmacies, and there's been a, a resurgence of a point. And and but one of the things that the folks at Rochester Drug Co-op were saying is, we we want your students. You, your students are really great with book learning. They know incredibly incredible amounts of science. They're very sharp, smart, but they don't necessarily have the on the ground experience. They don't necessarily know how to run a business. And we want to make sure you should make sure your students are practice ready. And I was driving back from Rochester that evening and I was saying, how do I make my students practice ready? How do I do that? It's just like so much for them to learn. And it occurs to me, I said, you know what? It's even harder than that because 
the, the, the industry is changing so quickly that as soon as they're practice ready, that's almost out of date. And we have to, we have to give them those problem solving skills, that resilience, that adaptability so that they go beyond practice ready. So that they're ready for the profession of tomorrow. That's great. Uh, I'm Mark Kaplan, and this is Saint Stories. Our guests are, and we have three of them today. Uh, we are honored to have Dr. Gregory Dewey. He says I can call him Greg because he's a nice guy. I don't know if I'm worthy of calling him I Greg, am a nice guy. He is a nice guy. <laughs> um, Willie White, who is the executive director of A Village, Inc. in Albany, and Jenna McGreevy, class of 17 at Albany College of Pharmacy. So, Jenna, this new project, what does that mean to you as a student? How does it encourage you? What does it do for you? Um, I think it's really exciting for myself as a student and for all students for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, um, it provides us an opportunity to express a lot of what we learn and get a lot of experience outside of the classroom. And that can be in many things. It can be regarding what we learn in the classroom. Um, in these student-operated pharmacies, we're going to have the opportunity to see real-life clinical practices and put examples to things that we learn in the classroom to help solidify our knowledge And more so, I would say, we get a whole bunch of experience that we don't touch on in the books and in the lectures about running a business, about interaction with patients, about, you know, those face-to-face skills and things like that, which I think is a really huge opportunity that um, will really push us over the edge and make us really great when we finally graduate and become practitioners. We also get to do all that while helping the community that we get to serve. Um, The community, the Albany and the Greater Capital District has done a lot for us as students, and it's really great for us to have the opportunity to give back as well. So it's not just an idea. It's something that you, in your mind, you feel you know that it will make you a better pharmacist once you finish with this project. Yeah, I 100% believe it will make me a better pharmacist when I do graduate from all the other the, the, all the aspects of the campaign. Um, I think it will make myself and all the other graduates who are ready to jump into the ever-changing landscape of pharmacy, like Dr. Dewey said, and to not only excel in there, but be leaders in that changing field of pharmacy. That's great. Willie White, you were the executive director of A Village. I'm sure you already knew that. I didn't have to tell you. (laughs) But uh, what is, now, Dr. Dewey mentioned it, what is A Village, Inc.? So, um, thank you so much for having us. Um, I also want to say that um, I'm honored to be here with Dr. Dewey and Jenna. a village is a grassroots organization in the south end of Albany. And, um, you know, a lot of people ask us, what do a village do? Well, we do everything. Mm. We do everything from advocating for jobs within the community, uh, health care. We work a lot on health care. We um, work in – there's this process that the federal government has turned over to the hospitals now. It's called the district. It's a delivery system um, for Medicaid um, services in our community. So village is very involved with that. But we advocate for um, a little bit of everything in our community. We're better. No- we're more known as the group that um, fought CDTA to get a bus within our community. So public transportation is one of the things we advocate for. A village also does a um, farmer's market in the community to bring fresh fruits and vegetables. We live in a community called uh, a food desert when, there's, uh, when you're uh, more than a mile away from, um, from a supermarket. So we bought um, fresh vegetables. Not only fresh vegetables to our uh, community, we also do Zumba classes. We do nutrition classes. Um, So we're um, a round um, organization that kind of touches on um, things that uplift our community and the spirit of the people within our community. So we're excited to be partnering with uh, the college um, to bring the pharmacy to our community and not only a pharmacy but a clinic where – uh, we kind of consider it a one-stop shop, and Dr. Dewey uh, I'll touch on that more. But um, where I, we, I can walk down if I'm not feeling good and talk to uh, the students and talk to uh, hopefully a nurse that um, can, um, you know, kind of um, carry us through the situation that we're facing. Um, if my blood pressure is up, I'm, I personally suffer from high blood pressure. So I want to be able to stop in and um, – say, you know, I'm not feeling good today, and get some results right there uh, instead of trying to go to the hospital and wait four or five hours in the emergency room. I don't assume I'm jumping to a conclusion. Well, actually, I am jumping to a conclusion, but I think I'm going to be accurate. Does a village come from it takes a village? It does. It does. It's an old African proverb. That's right. And can you explain what that means? Sure. Um, When I was growing up as a kid, um, in my community, um, not only was my mother my parent, but all the elders in the community, uh, we knew as kids that um, 
that uh, if we didn't do uh, what was right in our community, that the elders down the street would see us and they would tell our mom and uh, they would they they was actually given the permission to discipline us as kids. Mm -hmm. So it took the whole community to raise a kid. And so we kind of changed it around. It takes a village to really fix up our community, to, uh, to get rid of some of the ills in our community. So um, it's everybody working together. That's what a village really is. So this mm -hmm. project, I, I'm sorry, were you? No, no. I, okay. I, I, let me, let me a add something. You know, this concept of a village and, and this, this very broad base of, of activities and services fits into what we also need in health care for, for these mm. communities. It's not just about pharmacists. It's not just about primary care. It's not just about urgent care. It's, it's not just about wellness. All of these things have to come together uh, in, in an integrative, cohesive fashion. And, and, and this is going to require partnerships. It's going to re require collaboration. It's going to require some thoughtfulness, understanding what the needs are and, and what we want to attack. But I want to emphasize, you know, there's a real serious primary care problem, not only in, uh, in Albany, but in New York State and in, in the country. Mm -hmm. In New York State, it's estimated that 45% of the population lacks the primary care that it needs. Mm -hmm. uh, 8% of all doctors are refusing additional care, mm -hmm. primary mm -hmm. care physicians. But if you happen to be on Medicare, that number is 38%. 38 percent. Right. Yes. So if that you're on Medicare, sense. it's very difficult mm -hmm. to find primary care. We have to take control of this situation. And pharmacists, the future of pharmacy is about a pharmacist becoming a provider. That mm -hmm. is Jenna's future. Uh, pharmacists playing increased role, more of a primary care role. Right. And living living in an under, underserved area should not be punishable by poor health, should not be punishable by suffering. Uh, Precisely. I, Absolutely. Precisely. Absolutely. So, so the partnership is going to be great because um, a lot of people don't go to the emergency room because they feel like they're going to be sitting in there for three or four hours. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be easier to... Um, Walk out your door, uh, mind you. We live in a twelve. Um, our office is in a twelve-story uh, building where the college will be also, and people will uh, be comfortable in walking downstairs and walking into the pharmacy and being able to walk into the clinic and check and see, um, you know, on some conditions that they may have. So I think it's going to encourage people uh, more to visit the clinic. Mm -hmm. uh, a village is going to be doing some serious outreach as we do now um, um, to promote. Um, health care in our community and promote the pharmacy as a whole. So I think um, we're going we're gonna to be, I mean, it's going to be an ideal partnership and we'll, um, we'll make this work in our community. I, the, the other thing uh, yeah. we have going for us is... Actually, Dr. Dewey, can, we'll have to break in one moment. I promise mm -hmm. you we'll come right back. Okay, here. Um, Willie White said that he was honored to be here with Dr. Greg Dewey. Well, I'm honored to be here with Dr. Greg Dewey and Jenna and Willie. So this is quite an honor. It's like, it's an amazing program. And we have to take care of each other. And this is showing that we are starting to do that. I'm Mark Kaplan. This is Saint Stories. you got to stay tuned because we've got a lot more coming up with these amazing guests at 88.3 The Saint. I'm Mark Kaplan, and I think this is an important program. We're talking about getting health care to people that really need it, and there's a way to do it, and there's a way to help um, young people in their education, and this just helps everybody. Um, our guests are Dr. Greg Dewey. He's uh, the president of Albany College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. And I always forget to say the health sciences part. We'll get into that. Uh, Willie White, who's the executive director of A Village, Inc., and Jenna McGreevy. She's class of 17 at Albany College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. Maybe this relates to what you're going to talk about, Dr. Dewey, and I'm really sorry I interrupted you because I don't interrupt uh, people, but especially like a big shot like you. Why would I interrupt you? Of anyway, uh, Albany College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. Uh I interrupted you. I think you wanted to talk well, about. I, I was just going back to the some of the basic things that uh, this student-operated pharmacy uh, will do for us. And uh, by the way, we, we have named the pharmacy. It's, it will be a licensed pharmacist in New York State, and it's uh, called uh, uh, will be called College Parkside Pharmacy because hmm. it's located right next to Lincoln Park on uh, in. Um, in the south end of Albany. Nice. And this is really a win-win situation. It provides a great educational experience for our students, and it allows us 
to really become part of our community and really uh, look at models of wellness and health care uh, that we can bring to the community. Uh, but you know what? What really is, makes the whole thing go is our students. Uh, our, and I want Jenna to put fingers in her ears right now because our students <laughs> are very smart. They're very quantitative, problem-solving uh, students. They, they're whizzes in science, but they're more than that. Uh, they, uh, they're compassionate, and they, uh, they care about their communities. They care about uh, moving into, the, into health professions. Uh, so, so, they're, so, so they're really special. But one of the concerns that we've had is how will they do moving into these communities. Many of them are, are, not, from, uh, are not from the South End. And how, how will they... Uh, so I'm going to put Jenna on the spot and mm-hmm. ask her what she thinks about that. Um, so I think getting into the community and us volunteering and being there for the people of the community is a great opportunity. Um, with my organization so far, the, uh, the, um, pardon me, the American Pharmacists Association, um, the branch of student pharmacists, uh, we have already gotten out into the south end of Albany a little bit and spoken to some of the community members there. Uh, specifically, I think about an event we held this past fall uh, where we volunteered at a health fair that was being held in the district. And so many of the students who went um, were at first, I think, a little leery to go. because. Mm. But then once they went, um, they spoke to so many people and learned the stories of so many people. Um, it was an event that was providing immunizations to people who were homeless, who were refugees, who, you know, um, you know, didn't have access, means to get vaccinations and they were able to receive free vaccinations and they got to talk to so many people and hear their stories and like, you know, what type of struggles they go through on a daily basis. And I think at the end of that day, our students came out with more than they, you know, they learned a lot more than I think than they realized. And I think that's what exactly is going to happen with these Beyond Practice Ready and the student operated pharmacies. Students are going to continue to learn and grow from the st- people that they meet in the community. Jenna, why did you make the decision that you wanted to be a pharmacist? Um, I actually decided to become a pharmacist uh, back. Um, my mother, it's actually really funny. My mother always wanted me, a, me to be a pharmacist, and I told her, no, 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 and then I actually took her advice. <laughs> um, so I was able to travel to the Dominican Republic my junior year of high school nice. um, because I was uh, fairly well-versed in Spanish at the time. Um, I've lost it pretty much now. Um, and I was able to act as a translator for a pharmacist there. So I got to interact with people and the pharmacist directly and watch how that direct, pati- that direct interaction happened and to hear what the pharmacist would say and to hear the response from the individual and how they would, you know, how the pharmacist would tailor and how they would try to help as much as they could the person they were speaking with and just seeing how much of a difference that they could make and how much they learned from the other person, that interaction really just made me realize that's what I want to do. I want to I want to help people, but I want to learn too and become a better person. So myself. the really cool thing is you probably, and I'm jumping into your head, uh, you probably thought that you won't, wouldn't get a chance to do that until you graduate, but now you you got a chance to do it now. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's a huge opportunity for myself to do that now while mm-hmm. I'm still in school um, because those life lessons or those valuable lessons I'm going to carry forward when I graduate and continue to grow. So I'm already that much ahead. So when future students and future pharmacists see this program, do you think that'll make them think, yeah, that is what I want to do. I can help people. Yeah, I think it. that's exactly right. I think that's exactly what I'll do when I'll see, you know, students out in the community or even just, you know, appreciating or seeing what a pharmacist does for the community and learning what, you know, seeing that interaction between, I think that's exactly what it's going to do. It's going to pr- continue to promote the future of pharmacy. This in is, the profession. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. It's okay. Okay. Uh, this is Saint Stories. You don't have to say it's okay. You could say that was pretty bad. <laughs> um, this is Saint Stories. I'm Mark Kaplan and our guests are Dr. Greg Dewey of the Albany College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, Willie White of A, a Village or A Village Incorporated, and uh, Jenna McGreevy class of 17 at Albany College of Pharmacy. And Willie, people that listen to the show know I say this pretty much every week, and Jenna brought this up, so let's go for it. Sure. I always say people don't really understand a story or a situation or a program unless you put a face on it. So can you, you don't have to give the person's name, you probably mm-hmm. shouldn't. Sure. Maybe somebody that you help, somebody that is um, that a village is helping, and maybe tell me their story and tell me how this program will help them? So that's a very interesting question, a very good question, because a village is working on a um, healthcare situation in the south end of Albany. 
I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Ezra Prentice Homes. Yes. Um, the Ezra Prentice Homes are um, located in an area very in close proximity of the uh, Port of Albany. And so we're, we're, we're not only are they in close proximity of the Port of Albany, but you have the county waste down there. You have the diesel trucks, hundreds of diesel trucks coming through that area every single day, day and night. And, you know, they're surrounded by the uh, throughway. So um, I ran up on this website. Um, it's called theblastzone.org. And, and you put Ezra Prentice, 625 South Pearl Street in the blast zone, and you're smack dead in the middle. Ezra Prentice is smack dead in the middle of the blast zone. Hmm. So um, a village is a, um, we're, we're initiating um, health care programs in that area where we're doing a health care um, survey so we can talk to residents individually and, and hear their story about asthma rates down there. Um, there's, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm afraid to think about what the future holds for the kids in that area. You have like 150 kids under the age of 14 in mm. that, um, mm. in that uh, complex down there, and those kids are sleeping and breathing this every single day and night of their, of their lives. So uh, we're working hard to bring about education and awareness in that area. Could you take maybe one specific case of, uh, of somebody that you know? Again, you could use a fake well, name. Well, yeah. As a matter of fact, I can, I can think of a, a few cases where um, there's uh, kids down there that are suffering really terribly from asthma. Now, DEC has come in and um, did um, air studies in that area, but um, they will swear that you can't associate those the asthma cases with uh, the air that's going on down there because mm. their favorite saying is the air is below standard you know it's 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 right there so everything is perfect so uh, you know it's it's good to breathe this air well i disagree with them wholeheartedly mm. so that's why we're doing the air, um the studies down there ourselves and right. talking to the individuals to bring about awareness right and these are people that need health care and these are people that uh, sure. need sure. a lot of the uh, the services and a lot of the things that this this program will be offering right. exactly you're 100 percent right and that's why i know it's very important to partner with um, the albany college of pharmacy um, partnership is going to be great because together we'll bring a, about awareness in the community with uh, so the, the w- willie's example mm-hmm. here is a case where we're, we'll, we'll probably get uh, uh, are some of our health science as opposed to pharmacists involved. So we have undergraduate students that are essentially public health students, mm. and uh, we've been talking about having them design surveys uh, uh, related to asthma in that area, and these students uh, can design surveys, they can collect the data, they can analyze the data. So this is this is an example of a, uh, an emerging project that mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Uh, it's doesn't necessarily just involve the pharmacist, but involve some of our other health science students. Right. And, and just to, just to uh, follow up on that, I, that's why I'm really, really thrilled that we're partnering with, um, with uh, the Albany College of Pharmacy because the students will come in and help us on this project, and we're looking forward to that. We have a lot of great partners in our community who are helping us out in um, health care services. As a matter of fact, this Thursday, tomorrow, we have um, Dr. Elizabeth Whaling from the County Health Department. And actually, to a village just lady. in, in uh, Truth in Advertising, or this program is pre recorded. So when you say this Thursday, what you mean is two days ago because the program is running Saturday. But go ahead. Okay, gotcha, <laughs> gotcha. So, and by anyway, we'll, <laughs> Dr. Elizabeth Whalen from the, the new County Health Commissioner from the Albany County Health Department will be our guest at a village weekly meeting. Um, by the way, I, I do like to say that a village is a grassroots organization that meets every Thursday from 5 30 to 7 30 at the Capitol South Campus Center, our brand new school in the South End that we're so thrilled about. But, you know, we run into a lot of collaboration. We're collaborating with uh, Trinity Alliance of the uh, South End, uh, with the Radix Ecological Sustainability Center we're collaborating with. We do great work with partners, and it does take a village. It takes all of us working together to make this happen. How would somebody get more information about a village? Uh, you would go to www.avillageworks.org, and um, that's our website. Or uh, you can go on to Facebook and um, a village Inc. Um, slash Facebook, and um, there's tons and tons of information. Very nice. Dr. Yes. Dewey, um, when you thought of this idea, is this being done anywhere else, or are you hoping that this is going to kind of be a uh, a pilot? So so when I was right, uh, you know, when I was that long drive back from Rochester was <laughs> when I was, was thinking about this idea. And so actually I, I went on the Internet and I sort of uh, Googled it. And uh, so there is one other school that is doing it, Duquesne University in Pittsburgh. 
has put a pharmacy in the Hill District of Pittsburgh, which huh. is uh, another medically underserved area. And uh, I went to visit uh, Duquesne's operation. They were in the fourth year of running it. And so uh, we learned some good lessons from them, and they've been very uh, helpful in us. And, uh, in fact, um, in uh, two weeks I'm going back to – um, check in on them and uh, let them know uh, what progress we've made. So even though the first, uh, we're going to open two, so we'll have two more than they do. There, so. you, go. there <laughs> you go. And, you know, health care is an issue, and uh, you gave the statistics, but it's one thing to talk about health care, but you, all three of you, and everybody that all of you represent, you're actually taking very strong steps, and uh, all of you should be uh, should be applauded, and everybody that you're representing should be applauded. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so uh, much. Dr. Dewey, how would somebody get more information about this program? Well, uh, you can uh, look on our website, or if if you want to just email me, I would be happy to send them uh, my information. You're not going to publicly give your email address, are you? Uh, you can do Office of the President. Ah, there you yeah. go. There go. I just emailed him the other day. He's got a quick response time. Does he? <laughs> okay, That's Office of the that. President. Uh, at, uh, at acphs.edu. Can you give that again? Uh, office of the President at acphs.edu. Dot edu. Willie White, again, your contact info, how somebody gets more information? Our website is www.avillageworks, works as plural, dot org. That's great. So um, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the health care committee that a village has started you have within 20 the seconds. last month or so. Um, we have uh, probably about eight to ten vibrant people who are working very hard and keeping an eye on all the health care com- um, action that's going on in our communities. That's great. And they can get more information about that by going on your website. This has been an amazing exactly. show and an amazing program. All of you should be complimented. Thank you so much. Our guests have been Dr. Greg Dewey of the Albany College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. Thank you for allowing me to call you Greg. Uh, Willie White, who is the executive director of A Village. Thank you for allowing me to call you Willie. And <laughs> Jenna McGreevy. Who is I'm gonna I'm gonna let you say class of seventeen, but what are you? I'm president of our chapter of the American Pharmacists Association. I figured I'd mess it up, so I'd let you do it yourself. <laughs> All of you have been great. Thank you so much. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I know you. this program thank has inspired you. Well, you want to be further inspired? Well, I know you do because the change makers are coming right up at eighty-eight point three, the same.